Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Firefish Software Future of Rec Crowdcast. Um, I'm your host today, Cameron McLennan, uh, and joining me today, I'm absolutely delighted to have Ian Hamilton. Hi folks. Um, Ian, just before we go ahead and kick off, um, can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, cool. So I've been uh, I've been in recruiting my whole career, um, whether it's as a hiring manager, um, an agency recruiter, or an in-house recruiter. Um, my, my first official kind of entry into the re uh, recruitment market was when I moved to Scotland. You'll have noticed I'm from Belfast. It's, not, it's hard to miss. Um, so I started as most recruiters do in one of the big agencies. So I worked with Hayes. Uh, moved over to a company called Search over in uh, over in Aberdeen, where I recruited into the oil and gas industry. Then I took on my first in-house role, which ended up being uh, kind of I ended up managing and heading up the the talent attraction strategy for a, a fifty hundred business, um, where we recruited fourteen hundred people a month at peak. And um, now I uh, run a business that creates chatbots for recruitment teams, either in house or agencies, and we're created on a on a on a SaaS model. Yeah, brilliant. So um, Ian and I have sort of bumped into each other and met a couple of times at some of the true events dotted all over the place, and yeah. I've had the pleasure of watching them speak a couple of times. Um, always talking about great marketing hacks. So today we're going to have a wee chat about. Uh, chatbots and recruitment, um, LinkedIn retargeting, and PPC and programmatic. So um, to kick us off, um, we'll have a chat about uh, pay-per-click and programmatic advertising. So lots of recruiters, lots of people that are in here probably um, spend a pretty penny uh, with the job boards. <clears throat> Could they be putting that money to better use by spending it elsewhere? Right. So the way I like to think of this is... So most jobs that recruiters are advertising and find it hard to recruit people for are jobs that not everybody should apply to. They're niches, they're, they require qualifications, they require specific experience. Um, and yeah, what I believe people do whenever they are advertising jobs on a job board, it's essentially like Jaguar bringing a car down to the local mall on a Saturday afternoon and offering everybody a test drive. So it's mm -hmm. handing the keys out saying, do you want a test drive? Do you want to look at it? Do you want to look at it? The thing is that 99% of the people that they speak to will not be suitable to buy a Jaguar, right? Yeah. And this is what we do with jobs. We put jobs out in front of everybody and anybody on platforms like all of the big job boards and we then reject everybody. Now, Typically, what I saw in uh, what I saw as an in-house recruitment manager was that roughly ninety-six percent of people that apply for a job through one of the big job boards aren't right for the role. Which means that whenever you're a recruitment function that's hiring uh, anywhere, you know, kind of, we were hiring fourteen hundred people a month. Um, we were dealing with thirty-seven thousand applications a month through our website. Um, plus what we were getting through the job boards, which meant we were a rejection function rather than a recruitment function. So our 90% of our time in a day was spent clicking the reject button, telling people they weren't suitable for the role, um, allowing the ATS to do that automated rejection, and honestly giving people a pretty terrible experience. What I like to think that we should be able to do now using the technology that we've got is to make sure that our adverts only go in front of the people that should be right for the role and only pay when those people click. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. And that's when pay for yep. really comes into its own. Only pay to put the advert out in front of the right people and only pay when the right people click. So, yeah, it works, it works quite nicely. So why do you think a lot of the job boards aren't pushing this? Because they'll make less money or why are they not going down more of that avenue so the big job boards are right so monster do some of it i believe uh, indeed are probably the first true pay-per-click uh job board now there's a difference to the way job boards work again job boards do the pay-per-click model but they don't do the model of putting your jobs in front of the right people so they put your jobs in front of everybody mm -hmm. and charge everybody for every click Right now, I'm not saying that's right. Yep. That's wrong. Okay, your jobs have to be put out publicly. 
if you're doing targeted advertising of your careers, surely there's a better way or a more precise way we can put them out there. Now, the reason that job boards don't do it, I believe, is because, so whenever Cameron, you and I go out and we're looking to hire somebody, right? Typically, we're looking to hire somebody that will be able to jump into the role and will be able to uh, will be able to be successful early in their career with us, right? Unless it's a graduate or an intern or a trainee style position, right? So what we're typically doing is we're looking to hire somebody that's already good at the job, right? So we're looking to hire somebody away from a competitor, um, hoping to bring them into the business and have them starting quickly. Now the type of people that we want to hire away from the competitor are good people, all right? Now, typically those good people are doing good in their job. Their bosses like them. They, yeah. they, they aren't necessarily looking for a new role proactively. So they're not on the job boards, right? Yeah. As much, yeah. okay? So what you find is the job <laughs> boards are typically sending a pretty poor quality of candidate through. Now it's not the job board's fault. Okay, it's the people that come and visit the job board, right? And that's the people that come through to you on through your through your advertisement. But that's why the job board don't do that real targeted form of advertising because they wouldn't send enough people through, I don't think. Um they probably wouldn't get to charge you enough for your advertising. Yeah, cool. So can you can you give us an example where you've run a successful uh, PBC campaign or programmatic campaign mm -hmm. for a client and what the result the uh, result Yeah, sure. Were? So we've we've run a a number of PPC advertising campaigns um right the way from my days as in-house through to my past 18 months as a as a kind of recruitment marketing consultant on within the the chatbot side of thing the most recent that we ran we um spent just 200 pounds over the course of a month on facebook advertising we targeted that advertising really specifically so the advert that went out was for what's called a roughneck in the aberdeenshire area a roughneck is a is a person that yeah. will work in almost like a laboring role offshore okay so yeah. you can target these people pretty easily on Facebook without going too deep into the into the data and behavior targeting that you need to with some rules. So you can fairly easily target these folk. Now, you, we put that advert out to Aberdeenshire area, ring fence to the Aberdeenshire area, uh, made sure only roughnecks get to see it, and we only pay when roughnecks click. Now, we pay around about 28 pence per click, up to 50 pence per click, okay? Um, we're fairly confident the people that are clicking are right. Um, from that, now, I'm probably I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a wee bit cheeky here and talk about the results and why we've got the results. So out of that, we ha we're driving the clicks from the advert into a chatbot. Okay. Now, this is one of the, the first chatbots that, well, one of the first chatbots we built for a client. Um, the clicks went into the chatbot. The chatbot took the application. Right. The reason we did that was because we were driving applications to a landing page and we were seeing too much drop off. And we didn't like to see drop off whenever we were in the recruitment industry. So we drove into a chatbot, chatbot conversed with the people, answered their questions, took their application. We saw, um, so over the time, let me get this right. So we saw 240 people come into the chatbot. The chatbot had roughly 380 individual conversations. So some people back, came back a second time to chat with the chatbot. Um, out of that, mm -hmm. we were able to get 169 applications and 135 of those applications were pre-qualified as right for the role, right? So yeah. the interesting part yeah. of that is that I know for a fact that in the past, whenever I was looking to get 135 pre-qualified applications for a role. I probably need more than two and a half thousand applications to come through and I need to hit reject on 2,300 applications to get those 135 applicants through. So not only did we see a, a massive reduction in how much we would have spent with a job board, but we also saw a massive reduction in the number of applicants, but a much better quality of applicant to candidate ratio. So I mean, okay. So I mean, if you're, that's, I mean, that's that's really really good in terms of results. But if you're sitting here listening to this today and watching us, and you've never 
thought about doing any of this stuff before, um, but you're interested in exploring it as an option to sort of drive your business forward and help you get better candidates for your clients, where right. do you start? So I am not a software developer. I'm not a PPC marketing person. I've learned all of this as we go, right? So there is an absolute ton of videos on YouTube that will show you exactly how to put together an advertising campaign and that will uh, allow you to, 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 to target the right people, spend the right money, make the right conversions, right? My goodness, if you wanted to take your first dip in the chat box, you could just go and sign up with Chatfuel. And Chatfuel's a free bot builder. Now, it's very limited in its functionality and, you know, and the way it works. But it would be a first dip of the toe into the water of chatbots. Um, having said that, if you were going to, if you're in Scotland and you want somebody to do your Facebook ads for you, the only person you should reach out to is Gavin Bell. You'll find him on LinkedIn. He's absolutely awesome. Um, and uh, the only chatbot company you should reach out to, of course, is me. <laughs> Oh, well, that was uh, unreal. <laughs> I've actually, I actually interviewed Gavin. Uh, I'm not sure all right, he's cool. very, very good. He knows, he knows yeah. the stuff. He's a good guy. Um, so what? So I guess from that, then, and why do you think that not more people are doing this stuff? I mean, it's it's there's not a lot of uh, people people talking about this stuff in the market and recruitment at the moment. Marketeers are doing it. I've been doing it for a long time, but recruiters not really have it. So recruitment industry is typically quite a few years behind the marketing industry. So, you know, we, we, we take time to pick up on things and bring them into our technologies. Um, having said that, we're getting quicker and faster and faster all the time. Uh, reality is chatbots only became big in marketing uh, beginning of January last year, and that's when we launched our first chatbot. So we're, we're getting much more on the pulse with things. The one thing that has restricted how we can do this is technology, all right? So we're typically operating with a ATS or a CRM that does not build in this functionality, all right? Um, and there is no, well, there is typically no technology there for us to automate this. Now again, that's improving. So you'll see the likes of uh, the likes of Click IQ doing a great job at doing the programmatic buying of uh, PPC job ads, and also doing the programmatic buying of Facebook ads now. Um, so you see the, this technology is starting to come on the market, and it's starting to become big. And um, hopefully, within the next six months, I would say that you'll start to see companies moving away from the traditional buying of large job board contracts and moving towards mm -hmm. the optimized buying um, through platforms like Click IQ. Okay, cool. Um, so a lot of the stuff we've chatted about is around about sort of uh, Facebook and uh, chatbots and things, but most recruiters will um, be using LinkedIn heavily like day in, day out. Mm -hmm. Some people might have sort of paid for licenses with that, maybe even buying job slots, spending a lot of money with them. Um, Obviously, you can retarget. You can retarget on them as well. Um, how does that work in terms of your options and what you can do from uh, from a LinkedIn point of view? So I I love LinkedIn. So I'll I'll not tell you the value of the contract we had with LinkedIn when I was in house. It was it, it, it would make you cringe. Um, I love LinkedIn as a tool. Now the one thing that I would say is that you don't need to pay for some of the value that I'm going to talk about here, right? So first thing is, so if you go into the LinkedIn ad platform and you go to your uh, insights tag, okay? Insights tag is essentially LinkedIn's version of the Facebook pixel, right? The Facebook pixel or LinkedIn pixel sits on your website and tags people that arrive on your website, right? And gathers them into a pool of people on LinkedIn that you can drive targeted advertising to, right? So you can decide that uh, using this insights tag, I want to target people that visited a certain landing page within the last uh, couple of weeks, and I'm gonna push this advert out to them and pay for that on a pay-per-click basis, okay? So you get ultra, ultra targeted. People that visited this blog, I want to target them with this advert, all right? So it actually means yeah. that the people you're targeting with your advertising are already 
uh, aware of your brand, already engaging with you, and are potentially much, much easier to convert into customers or into candidates. I haven't said that, you don't actually need to pay for some of that value because you can just drop the LinkedIn Insights tag on your website and watch the statistics, okay? So the Insights tag will tell you the geographies of people that are visiting your site, will tell you the industries of people that are visiting your site, and will tell you the rule levels of people that are visiting your site. They clearly don't tell you who, but they'll tell you by and large, the role levels, the, the the industries and the geographies that they're in. So you can start to use that data to your benefit. So for example, in the most basic sense, you could say the people visiting my site are uh, in the oil industry and are of manager level and are within the Aberdeen area. Now for me and in my in-house role in the past, that would have ticked all the boxes for me. Having said that, if all of the people visiting my site were, uh, where people that were um, outside of Aberdeen, where maybe down south, where not in the oil industry, were not, uh, were, were not qualified for the role, well then our advertising yeah. isn't doing a good job. The right people aren't coming to our site and we need to switch up our advertising. So you can use those insights, but if you get even smarter, you can use the insights tag to watch individual pages. So if you had the insights tag on a campaign landing page and then had the insights tag on your application flow, you could then see per page the people that are making it through your application process. So you can see yeah, that. So you can see where they're dropping off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can see that the start of your application process, you've got all of these lovely people that you really want to apply. And hopefully you're using good technology to make that happen. If you're not, you can see that drop off happening and you can see that by page 15 of your application process that you've lost everybody that you would ever want to speak to. Um, you can then take that data back to the leaders of your business and say, this is the statistics that we see, this is what's happening and this is why we need to make a change. And that's one of the things that we've really struggled with within the recruitment industry. We've struggled to prove things enough to make it a financially viable decision for our business leaders, okay? Maybe not so much in the recruitment industry because uh, making optimizations makes more money in the recruitment industry, um, but for the in-house industry, we've definitely struggled to, to make those kind of financial business cases. Cool. Um I'm going to jump back a little bit because we've had a couple of questions come through there as well. So uh, Richard's asking, um, can you talk us through what a chatbot does once someone has clicked on a Facebook link okay. to engage the chatbot? Yeah, cool. So typically the, the, the most common way for somebody to arrive into a Facebook Messenger chatbot is via a Facebook advert. So the Facebook advert just appears in your timeline like any other advert would. And um, it has the same call to action, but when clicking on that advert, the Facebook Messenger pops up in front of you. If you're on a, if you're on the desktop version of Facebook, it's in the bottom right of the screen. If it's in the mobile version of Facebook, which let's be honest, most of it is, um, the screen just flips over. It flips to your Messenger app, and the chatbot starts speaking to you. All right now, we can do. A number of other ways of grabbing people into the chatbot. We can, if somebody comments on a post, we can add them to the chatbot automatically, or we can do all sorts of subscribe and register and links and all that sort of stuff. But whenever somebody clicks on an advert, they enter into the chatbot in a place that is relevant to the advert they've clicked on. So if they clicked on a roughneck job, they would arrive in the roughneck um, uh, part of the chatbot and start to apply or be screened for the roughneck role. Cool, fat smashing. And Mark's asking, saying he ran a bot on his website um, for certain applications directed from Facebook ads for three months, mm -hmm. and he says that he discovered uh, what he discovered was that applications were ninety nine percent worse uh, than a job board application. The website drew in candidates that were from out with the EU and ineligible to work these jobs. Um, so what did he do wrong? Okay, so I would say that you probably have a pretty big issue with your targeting. Um, if people are, if you're only looking for people that are in the UK or in the EU, then you should be able to use Facebook's location targeting to only advertise to people that are within the UK or within the EU so that you don't get your advert displaying to anybody else. Um, 
you did that, Mark. All oh, right, okay, cool. Well, there, there, there's there's obviously a problem with the advertising campaign that you've done. Um, we've effectively um, ring fenced one kilometer circles around airports before, so that we only advertise to airport staff that already have airside clearance, um, and that's worked well. So, not knowing the the exact way you set up the 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 ads campaign or anything like that um, i would find it hard to answer exactly that but i'd be more than happy to look through it for you to see if there's anything that can be done for with that so you get more more result in the future the the other thing Fashion. is i would say is if you're using a facebook ad campaign i would recommend using a facebook messenger chat bot because you're keeping somebody on the same channel as they're already on which is a nicer user experience than driving somebody to a external website where they have to maybe check that it's HTTPS or they have to check that, you know, it's a, a legitimate place that they've actually landed on. Yeah. Uh, Claire's asking as well, you know, like using the Roughnet campaign as an example, could you, um, do you have to use a chat bot at the back end of that or could you just contact everyone who clicked? Okay. So, so, it looks suitable. We, so there's several different, ad types that you can run on Facebook. So you can add, uh, you can run an ad type that sends people to a landing page on your site. And if they fill in the form, then absolutely you've got their details and um, and you can phone them. Yep, that's, that's one way of doing it. You're realizing that a lot of people are gonna drop off. Second way is you can run what's called a lead ad. Um, and a lead ad effectively pops up a, uh, an overlay on Facebook's screen and asks you if it's okay to send your details via Facebook to the advertiser, right? Now, to effectively use that with your, uh, with your recruitment campaigns, you're gonna need to set up a couple of different things. You're gonna need to set up a feed of those people to the place that you're going to store them so that you can use them because it's not handy using Facebook's functionality to see the leads that are coming through. So one of the simplest ways of doing that would be to use a Zapier function into Google Sheets and then have everybody being stored in Google Sheets and to contact them from there. Bearing in mind that GDPR is coming in May and you need to check if any of this sits within your company's GDPR policies. Right? Yeah. Cool. The, the third way would be deliver them to Messenger Chat, but the big thing is that everybody that subscribes or everybody that interacts with the Messenger Chat bot is automatically subscribed and you have the ability to push marketing out to them or to remind them to apply for a job in the future. So we'll typically do at least one drop-off sequence for every advert that somebody comes in to think about applying for because we all know we look at something on our phone, on the bus or in work, the boss arrives behind us or the boss arrives at the station, we'll put our phone in our pocket and we'll never look at it ever again. But we're able to run that drop-off sequence six hours later, hopefully when they're at home having a cup of tea, bringing them back into the application process. Yeah, smash. And I think as well that goes down to that whole candidate journey as well, doesn't it? If you're keeping them in Messenger, keeping them on platform, it's a nicer, nicer experience. Yeah. Um, so Don's mentioned something here about sharing screen. Don, I think probably the best thing to do there is actually to contact Ian after the call, maybe set some time aside and you can, you guys can chat about that. He's, he'd be happy to give you some time. We've got lots of things that we want to get through, uh, yeah, sure. get, get through today. So um, let's go back to the, like, sort of the, the LinkedIn stuff. So what are the, what would you say are the main, the main similarities or differences between target and capability on LinkedIn versus uh, Facebook, which, um, yeah, what would you say the main differences? It's easier to target professionals very specifically on LinkedIn, okay? Um, it's becoming easier on Facebook, and Facebook are making big strides at improving their targeting. In fact, they've launched their Facebook version of the CV over in America, and some of the functionality has started to roll out over here. Facebook Jobs has just come out over here, so they're going to start to get a lot of data. But in the meantime, LinkedIn, it's easier to target people. The other thing is, and it's something that's actually you can do on solely on LinkedIn. You can't do this on Facebook. So you can run the LinkedIn pixel on a campaign landing page, and then you can set up a LinkedIn in-mail ads campaign to automatically in-mail everybody that visits the campaign landing page, right? Now, if you're gonna be yeah. smart about it, you do two things. You pixel in the people that arrive on your landing page, 
and you pixel yep. out the people that land on the thank you for applying page, right? So you only get the drop-offs that land on your campaign page or the people that drop off from your campaign page without applying or without doing it. And then they, out of the blue, receive a LinkedIn in mail from you a few days later. And that is obviously, don't be creepy about it. Don't say, I saw you on our website, but find an inventive way of bringing them into a conversation about the rules that they were looking at. You've now got intelligence on why you should be connecting with them. That's that's really good, really really interesting. And um, actually, when we were doing some research um, on uh, on you in preparation for this today, uh, we were uh, my colleague was retargeted that way, and she was like, "This is this is pretty cool." <laughs> um, so yeah, it works. <laughs> um, can you um, can you give us a quick example of any clients or um, uh, sort of any case studies where you've you've ran a campaign like this? Yeah, so we run these campaigns for ourselves at times, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. So w whenever we release a blog and it gets some activity, we'll we'll pop the the the, the retargeting pixels, or well, they're always on it. So the the retargeting pixels are always on it, and we launch campaigns based upon that. Um, we have run these campaigns. Uh, well, back in my in-house days, we ran automated email campaigns like this for a, a number of different things. So whenever we were doing a project startup, we would launch a campaign page. That campaign mm -hmm. page would have details around the project that we were starting up. So it might be a massive commissioning of an oil refinery over in the Middle East. And um, we would launch a campaign page on that, talking about what, what was happening in the company. We would then use the retargeting pixels to drive adverts to people that wouldn't uh, th that hadn't actually applied or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. Statistics on that, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make them up. I can't remember what they were. Yeah, but it was all part of a wider strategy of how we were delivering it. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, it's just really good to hear how these things are put together and, and situations around about that. I guess, like, there'll be people in here today who, are, who think they're listening to this and they think this is brilliant. We want to start doing it, but they maybe have to justify. Uh, this to further up the tree in terms of agency owners and things like that. So when it comes to uh, measuring your ROI with this type of things, you know, what are you looking looking at to see if we're getting a return? Yeah. So your your point there of justifying this is difficult, and it absolutely is because what I what I'll always say to people is don't turn off your current channels that are bringing people towards you, right? So this is this has to be looked at as additional investment in the short term to prove value so that you can ramp up what's working for you and then reduce the cost in other areas. So for example, if you are recruiting, uh, if you're recruiting manager level people in Glasgow, that might be a great use for a LinkedIn in-mail campaign. Whereas if you're recruiting call center representatives in Belfast, it might be a great use for programmatic job advertising. So okay. you can see how your, your strategy for how you're attracting talent has to become more segmented. And it re well, it always should have been more segmented. We never should have yeah. relied on one or two different channels to attract all our talent. We always should have been focusing on putting adverts in the places that people already are rather than expecting them to come to us. Um, but what I would say is that this has to be looked at as an element of additional expenditure. Now, thankfully, that additional expenditure is not gonna is not gonna kind of empty anybody's bank account. All right. Mm -hmm. So the likes of a two hundred pound job advertising campaign, bringing all of those candidates to you, make higher off that. And if you have a cost of higher of two hundred pounds, there, most recruiters will jump around for that sort of cost per hire. Um, yeah. Or if you're using programmatic job advertising, you'll probably find that a lot of the advertising that you do will be free rather than pay per click because the advertising, the programmatic platforms decide when you need to actually invest money on job adverts. Yeah, and uh, click, I, click IQ is one worth worth looking uh, looking at with that stuff. It's, it's a cool platform. Yeah. Um, Mark and Richard are both sort of asking, you know, like how do you how do you ascertain like what you've got to spend? Uh, in right. these campaigns. So I would say if you're thinking Facebook ads, um, and I would, if you've never done it before, I would consult with somebody 
to get them to help you, right? Now, you'll usually find that the ad consultant's fee will be quite a bit more than the amount of money that you're spending, particularly whenever you're starting off. But if you use the right person to do it for you, you will find the return on investment is much better. Now, if you want to hack it together yourself, you want to do it yourself, that's a great way to do it. It's the way I've done all of my stuff in my career. Um, but you have to realize that it might take slightly longer to come, to come about. And Audra's absolutely right. Learn it all on YouTube. That's where I've learned an awful lot of the advertising stuff that I do. Um, yeah. But I would say that a couple of hundred quid um, on something like Facebook advertising to attract the right set of people is a great amount to spend in a month. And you just set the budget of how much you want to spend and watch it tally up over the course of the month. Um, you can use other Facebook ad platforms like Ad Espresso or Ad Presso um, that does a bit of automation in the background for you, but more than anything, will pull together a really nice set of reports that says this ad's performing really well and this ad's performing really poorly. So you switch off the poor one and you try and improve the better one. Yeah, cool. Um, we've got a call to action at the bottom uh, here just now called How to Use Paid in Recruitment. So there's an ebook written there with some information on this stuff. If you guys want to have a look at that, feel free. Um, YouTube's great shout, as Audra saying there. Um, Social Media Examiner, great website as well. And if yep. you guys are actually wanting to use someone to do this stuff, if you Google uh, Mr. Gavin Bell, uh, he's the guy that we were chatting about earlier on, he'll uh, be able to have a chat with you. So um, let's move on to uh, a bit more detail on the on the chatbot itself, the chatbot stuff. Yeah. So um, this is a very open-ended question. And there's various different ways to go about this, but I mean, how in general do you see do you see recruitment uh, recruiters using chatbots? Right. So the most popular use that we have seen to date is to is the converting of, of advertising the converting of tip tours into applications okay okay um and that is done either through facebook messenger or through a website on the client or sorry a chatbot on the client's website now more and more we're starting to see clients using uh, more proactive outreach for some of their campaigns. So for example, anybody that applies for a job receives a text message that brings that person into a screening chatbot that asks them a series of questions, collects a series of answers, and allows the recruiter to make their decisions quicker. Now that would usually be on a higher volume basis where you would have hundreds if not thousands of candidates for a role ping them all a text message, collect all of their answers, use that as intelligence to uh, pick the first people that you're going to shortlist screen interview and, uh, and hire uh, is, is, is another one. The, the other, what, where I see it going is I see it going much more to what I would call an experience, right? So one of the challenges about how things have been running to date with chatbots is that we're very early stage in the recruitment industry. So it's very much dip your toe in the water, find out if one solution is beneficial for your business, right? Yep. Um, so what, what typically happens is we launch a chatbot on one platform for one very specific purpose. And quite often that very specific purpose is to uh, convert more candidates or to screen people to save time so make more money or save more money, right? Um, yeah. I see it becoming an experience-led thing because whenever somebody interacts with a chatbot on Messenger or on text, and they get this really nice experience, really simple application process, and then they arrive to your website, which is still from the 1980s. They arrive to your applicant tracking system, which is uh, something that dinosaurs would would, would struggle yeah. to cope with. Um, they they phone your office and they don't get speaking to anybody. They get all of the same old bad experiences that, let's be honest, we are all famous for in the recruitment industry, right? So I see it becoming an experience-led thing where no matter how you interact with, at the top of the funnel stage with a business, whenever it comes to hiring, if they're using chatbots properly, you will interact through the chatbot, which will give you 
instant answers to pretty much all of the questions you can come up with and we'll handhold you through any application or screening experience. Cool. So so then uh, would you say uh, a drawback of that is that you need to make sure the entire experience end to end is going to be good. You can't just have, you can't just nail one bit of it. You've got to have everything. Yeah. Well, I would say so typically what the way I like to think of it is focus on the top of the funnel. Mm-hmm. So top of the funnel being the, the high volume candidate load that are coming towards you, the high volume people that are coming towards you. Focus your chatbot on that to start with mm-hmm. and allow your recruiters to focus on the bottom of the funnel, real interesting conversations that will potentially create value for your business, either in revenue or in actually hiring people if you're an in-house. So okay. take a wee bit of the, the top heavy admin uh, replying, rejecting, or answering questions, provide a better service by answering lots of questions with your chatbot, and then whenever people are actually in the recruitment process of of going to interviews and stuff like that, allow your recruiters more time to deal with those people at that stage. Okay. Now, what about if you're running a, an agency that sort of recruits uh, only maybe niche, mid to senior level roles? Is there a, a need for chatbots at the moment, do you think, with them? So it definitely has less relevance whenever we think about using Facebook advertising. Now, okay. having said that, if you look at the statistics, apparently 82% of the adult population in the world that use an internet-enabled device also use Facebook on a monthly basis. Mm-hmm. Right? So the statistics are pretty overwhelming whenever it comes to that. Now, they're not verified statistics. They're stuff I've read. Right? So don't quote me overly on it. But the statistics are pretty overwhelming. We're recording this. You know that. <laughs> I'm just putting the disclaimer out there. It's okay. <laughs> um, so the statistics are pretty overwhelming. So don't discount Facebook or don't discount some platforms just because you think, well, I don't use it, so they mustn't. The other side is, um, so somebody arriving to your website. So as chatbots get more popular and as people start to interact with chatbots and get instant answer to the questions that they're asking and start to instantly learn through conversation, they're going to expect this experience with companies, right? So yeah. the companies that don't have this are going to be the ones that are falling behind unless you have a live in-person chat experience on your site. Okay. Uh, ben Gladhill put together one of those for the Manchester Met University. I think their recruitment team actually does live in-person chats with people that want to chat to them. That's pretty cool. Most recruiters couldn't handle that sort of level of activity. Um, so... Yeah, there is a case for anybody to have a chatbot on their site. So somebody can arrive along and say, hey, I was wanting to understand how you help senior managers get new careers. And the chatbot will understand that string and deliver you into the diary of the recruiter for that level and get that person in front of you as quickly as possible for a real person conversation. Yeah, it's really smart, and uh, yeah. So I get so the in terms of then, if you were to weigh up the benefits um, of a chatbot versus a human recruiter, um, what, what what do you think it would be? Yeah, so most companies will struggle with more than three or four conversations happening at one time. A chatbot will handle thousands of conversations happening at the same time with ease. Um, the there is also the point of, and I like to think of it sometimes in an HR sense to make the point rather than anything. So if you think of yourself as an internal employee within a business um, and think of yourself as a guy right now, think of yourself as me whose wife might have just you know, got pregnant and might be looking at the maternity leave and you might want to know whether, you, whether there is a split maternity paternity style arrangement. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, one type into a chatbot will give you that answer. We'll provide you the policies, we'll provide you the documentation, and we'll provide you the application form for it to happen. Right? Yep. Whereas one email to a junior HR associate who has never dealt with that before will result in two weeks of round robins around the HR team before you get an answer. And by that time, you're thoroughly peeved and annoyed with what's going on. Now, yeah. transfer that into a recruitment conversation, and yeah. 
all of a sudden you're finding yourself with the correct information instantly without you having to chase anybody up or wait for it. Uh, that's really interesting. I think even as well, like from an agency perspective, if you're running an agency with half a dozen recruiters working for you and there's candidates coming in from all different sources, you're, you know, you're, you are, you're sourcing, there's applicants coming in from all the job boards, you're running these campaigns on uh, Facebook or LinkedIn, if candidates are engaging with these and coming through and they're not being dealt with, that can have a huge negative impact on an agency as well. People tell their mates, so I dealt with this agency, they never phoned me back, or I applied for this role and they didn't come back to me. Um, so I yep. guess on the agency side as well, you're sort of, you can you, you can protect your agency brand with this as well. Um, which one, is really one of the bots that we're running for a company over in America at the minute, the most commonly asked question is how will I get paid? It's a it's a a large taxi style company. One of the most common questions is how will I get paid? And the bot answers them instantly and then asks them if they would like to apply for the job. And that flow just happens. It says we've got an app that you can decide to be paid at any time. Would you like to yeah. apply for the job? And boom, you've got an application. Wow. Easy. Easy. So um if anyone wants to start playing around with this stuff, uh, get involved, testing chatbots and all that sort of stuff, what should they do? Yeah, so there's a couple of things, right? So you can go to a bot builder like Chatfuel and you can put together a chatbot yourself um, that will be very restricted in its functionality. And also, I would again highly recommend that you look at your GDPR policies and that you look at where some of these companies host their servers mm -hmm. before you make any decisions on how you're collecting data because yep. you can fall foul pretty easily. Um, having said that, one of the things um, I actually think, so there's a lot, of, there's people out there at the minute that are saying chatbots will die because people are annoyed with them, right? And I think that there is a certain amount of people that are annoyed at chatbots at the minute and have been turned off the experience because most of the bots out there provide a terrible experience. The reason that has happened is because Facebook allowed platforms like Chatfuel to launch free chatbots, right? And free chatbots meant that every growth hacker and every spammer marketer in the world all of a sudden grabbed the chatbot drove ads into that chatbot and really peeved people by constantly pestering them, right? Yep. So what we had there was, if you think of how the technology innovation curve usually happens, you have a very slow, slow ramp up of how technology is developed. And then whenever it gets really good, it hits mainstream and it goes up and everybody starts using it, right? Yep. Now, what Facebook did was at the early stage of learning about the technology, they sent it mainstream by allowing chat fuel on these companies to actually launch the chatbots. Now, what that did was it meant that everybody started doing it without having, like, without knowing how to do it, and all of a yep. sudden you had the really bad experiences happening. Now, this I believe will correct itself over the next while, where Facebook will start to make it much more difficult for companies like Chatfield to get bots approved, and they'll be much more careful about how people are collecting data and what they're doing with data. And so if you're looking for an experience-driven exercise for your business, you need to be talking to a company that launches bots on multiple platforms and manages all of the APIs for you. So if you launch a chat field, rely on chat field maintaining their technical competence and their API policies with Facebook. You launch with a company, you mean uh, like like ourselves it means that you're not restricted to any one message and platform your apis are always kept up to date by us through our sla and everything is done for you so yeah have, have a think about how you want to get started before you jump in and I'm more than happy to, to show anybody about what we've got yeah so on that note then um where if anyone's wanting to get in touch with you after this what's the best way for them to to reach out to you so we've got the very aptly named recruitmentbot.co.uk domain name where you can jump on and you can see a nice wee, uh, a nice wee graphic of how a chatbot runs through. You can read a couple of the blogs and you can book a demo directly in my diary using that platform. Um, or you'll see me at an event around the UK in the near future.
brilliant. Ian, look, really, really enjoyed that. Some really, really good value for everyone to take away there across all of the subjects. Um, it's thoroughly appreciated you taking the time out today to join us. Um, thank you very much. No problem at all. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for joining us as well. Keep your eyes peeled for the next Firefly Software Future of Rec Crowdcast. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.